Page 45, Barrel House Blues. This is a blues piece. On page 44, they explain a little bit about the 12 bar blues. Don't know if you've had 12 bar blues or not. Just in case, I'll cover it briefly. A bar is another word for measure. A bar and a measure, they're interchangeable. A bar line and a measure line, it could be called either one. That vertical line, some people call them bar lines, some people call them measure lines. I call them either one, depending on who knows what's going on in my head at the time. So when they're talking 12 bar blues, we're talking 12 measures. That's a set pattern, a chord progression. Key of C, let's go back to good old key of C. It works in any key. We use C because it's all white keys. And it's the primary chords in the key. The one chord, the four chord, the five seven chord, and the one chord. That's the blues. Uses, I mean, actually, blues uses, uh, it gets a little more involved in that, but let's keep it simple. That's the chords we're going to use, the primary chords. And it's a set pattern. You get four bars or four measures of one chord. One measure, two measure, three measure, four measure. Yeah, 18. Then you get two measures of four chord. Two measures of one chord. That's eight measures so far. Okay. Then you get one measure of five chord or five seven chord. I think they're using five chord here, but you can use five seven. One measure of four chord, and then two measures of one chord. That's 12 bars. And you just keep repeating that pattern over and over and over for however long the piece lasts. And people improvise on this stuff, well, they're going to follow that chord progression. They're going to improvise on this. So it's, again, four measures of one chord, two measures of four chord, two measures of one chord, a measure of five or five seven chord, whichever. If I want a 5 chord, and I'll just play a D instead of an F, that's a 5 chord. And then I'll say it's 5, 1, and 2, 2. That's it. So look at Barrel House Blues. They put the name of the chord up above. A C chord and C major is a 1 chord. You've got 4 measures of those. The, first, the whole first line is that. So it's here. And then the second line, you get two measures of F chord, well that's the four chord, and then two measures of C chord again, that's the one chord. Last line, you get one measure of the G chord, one measure of the F chord, and two of the C. 12 bar blues pattern, and that's what they're talking about in 12 bar blues. And it's fun to improvise in it, if you like to do that sort of thing. Now, let's go over this blues thing here and get the notes first. Right hand first, you got C chords to start with and the last measure is just one and two and one and two and three and four. So at the beginning of this take the tie out and play all the notes. So one and two and three and four. Now once you have a handle on that and you can feel it, then put the tie back in. You're just hanging on to the note rather than playing it again. One and two and three and four. See, those numbers in between, those aren't finger numbers. If they wanted finger numbers in it, they would put them above. Those are, that's just counting. That's just what they put in here. Second line, then the F chord, C chord, and then that thing again. Last line, one and two and three. You're using F sharp. One and They don't need the natural sign there, but again, they're being nice. Yes, it is a E natural. And then you come up during the rest up here, an octave higher. One and two and three and off. Rest in, four and, whatever. Left hand, you have a sort of a boogie-woogie pattern going on. And they're saying one here, and they're using one on both of these. I strongly disagree with that. Ooh. I use two on the first one. Alternate two and one. You get this a lot in music, and I, I suggest you use two and one. And then in the second measure, you can use the thumb for the A and the B flat both, but I'm still reserving the second finger for the G's. So the second measure is one and two and three and four and. 
And again, if that's confusing you, then take out the ties and play all the notes. One and two and three and four. And then once you kind of get an idea of that, put the ties back in. One and two and three and four. Second line, same thing, five and a two. So you're alternating two and one. You'll get used to this moving around. And, and, uh, and right now, do the best you can, because the beat needs to be steady. You don't have to go fast, but it needs to be steady. So I'm going from here to here. Five one to five two. Last line, it's here. Now you can do a 5 1 and a measure risk or a beat risk. Well, go down one note, and then when you go down to the bottom, it's back to 5 2. And the last note that C has an AV under it, so you go down an octave. If you have the key, if you have a short keyboard, you just play the lowest C you have. Put the hands together here. in the left hand here and that gives you a chance to move up. As you're playing this you can move the left hand up. Now you have a rest in the right hand. The, I mean you're, you're right here it's not like you have to move anywhere but the point is it needs to be silence. The rest in the left hand that gives you a chance to move up here. And again, the rest in the left hand, make sure. Rest in the right hand. Move up. Sort of that. So get a handle on this because no hesitations. It's got to be whatever speed you take, it's your speed. This is not a fast blues piece. This is a regular, typical, slow, medium slow. So get a handle on that. As far as the dynamics go, it's like a duet almost. This is important. You have an accent on it. The reason you're accenting is because it's a syncopated note, and typically we will accent syncopated notes. They don't even have to put in the accent sign. You should still just accent it because it's you're playing it sooner than you expect, and we accent those when we. At the end of the line, you get a staccato in the right hand. Here, don't accent that. The idea is when we come up, we tend to play a little louder. Don't just act just staccato. So forth. So I kind of glossed over the articulation. The idea is put in the staccatos and the accents. You can see them as well as I can. And the last measure, it's a here. Accent that note. And the last note is a staccato accent. Whatever. Really, it's the accent because when it gets that low. Just don't play it soft. Don't play it really loud. Just don't play it soft. That last note. There. Okay. Then we kind of put it into a blues style. Blues, swing, and jazz. There's three types of music. It's a standard. It's just a style of the music. When you get eighth notes, you play them in a long, short fashion. You count it in a long, short fashion. So instead of one and two and three, it's one and two and three, and that's just the way it, it's a felt thing. There's no notation for it. It's, you feel it. So in the last measure, the first line here, it's not straight. One and two. You, you might do that when you're first learning it, but put it into the stuff. One and two and one. Like so. So do that. Only the eighth notes, nothing else. But do that. If they want even eighth notes, in a, they have to put in a note telling you play evenly. Otherwise, you're supposed to automatically swing them. Long short of them. Hmm? It's not a dotted rhythm, it's not a triplet, it's somewhere in between. You feel it. So it's here.
again, interpreting this, you can put in staccatos if otherwise, or other accents if you feel them, or other things if you feel them. It's a blues thing. Feel it. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. And I am going to swing the eighth notes. Not going to do any dynamics. There isn't really too much dynamics. You, it's all about the same level, but you can get a little louder and softer as you feel it. So I'll give us four counts. Let's try it slowly. One, two, ready and go. And one and two. 